Jenny, you look so beautiful. That dress suits you so well. I am so happy for you. You really think so? Thank you. She's right. You're the most beautiful bride ever. You look like an angel. Seriously. <laughs> Everyone keeps saying how nice I look. I guess my makeup artist was worth the money. She got me cleaned up nicely. <laughs> Oh, come on now. You would never have looked this stunning if you weren't pretty even under your makeup. It's so impressive. I can't believe you managed to marry the director of the company only two years after you started. You'll have to tell me your secret so I can find myself a husband too. Did you start dating on your very first day at the company? <laughs> Don't be silly. You know I didn't plan this all out. <laughs> We've only been dating for a year anyway. My mother-in-law said she hoped we would get married quickly, so she was supportive of us choosing to tie the knot. I guess it's thanks to her that we're all here today. I saw the groom outside earlier in his suit and everything. He looks so handsome. He's tall, too. I feel like I didn't notice it before. We never thought you'd be the first one out of us to get married. You surprised us all. And now look at you. You found your Cinderella fairy tale and you're going to marry your Prince Charming. I don't know what to do with myself. I am so nervous. I feel sick. My hands are shaking like crazy. I can't even hold my bouquet steady. My life has been such a dream lately. I guess I'm just worried that something might go wrong today and it could all come crashing down around me. Oh, bless you. There is no need to be nervous. You'll be just fine. You've survived some tough times before you joined the company and things started to look up for you. You can get through the nerves of today, too. Besides, this isn't a dream, so there's no need to worry about it becoming a nightmare. Don't stress. I'm sure your groom is feeling just as anxious. Be brave for him. She's right. You've always been a kind person and a hard worker. This is your good karma. You've earned this. Don't doubt yourself and just enjoy your special day. After today, you'll never have to worry about anything ever again. You and your husband will be a great team. Don't go crying at your own wedding. Thanks, guys. I love you both. Let's do this. Time to get married. Just don't forget us when you're off traveling the world and living it up with your new husband. Your besties are just as important, remember? I would never. You know how important you guys are to me. I'm not that kind of girl that would ditch her friends for a man. Ma'am, are you ready? We're all set up and waiting, so whenever you're ready, I'll get started with the photos of you all. Oh, I almost forgot about photos. I was so nervous it must have slipped my mind. Sit down, girls, quick. We were standing around chatting for too long. It's okay if I sit here, right? I'm not sat on your dress. Okay, great. Let's go. Picture time! Ma'am on the left, uh, would you just move a little bit closer to the beautiful bride, please? Okay, perfect. You all look lovely, okay? Stay right there. And smile. One, two, three, cheese. Lovely. Finally, this is the end of my miserable, lonely years. It'll be nothing but happy days and love from now on. I can't wait for the rest of my life to start. I can't believe I really have everything I've ever dreamed of. I feel so lucky. I'm like a real-life princess. If this is a dream, I hope I never wake up. I could stay in this moment forever. This is the best day of my life. I never wanted to end. Man, I am absolutely beat. I don't think I've ever been this exhausted. Here, have something to drink. I got you a glass of water. Drink up, honey. The company has been talking about promoting me for two years now and still no sign of it ever happening. I'm gonna go crazy, I swear. I just feel so burnt out at this point. I don't think I can hold on until they finally decide to give it to me. I've been working towards this promotion for so long and now I feel like just giving up. I don't think I see it ever happening at this rate. Babe, I know you've been thinking about moving to a different company. I've been waiting for you to talk to me about it, but seeing you like this makes me wish you would leave and find a better job. I guess finding a new job could help, but I think I just need some time out, to be honest. I just want to full rest and take a long break. You know my mom is living alone, and I think about her a lot too. I have to help her with her bills since she's retired and can't work anymore. She's getting old and I worry about her a lot. I can help with those bills while you're taking a break. She's my mom now, too. Jenny, I know your salary isn't enough to cover that. It's very kind of you, but it's not something you're able to do, and that's okay. 
Yeah, I know. I think I used up all the good luck in my life when I joined the company and met you. It's all been worth it for our marriage. To be honest, I don't expect to get anything else from working at the business. Like I said, I got you and that's all I could have asked for, really. I've been thinking about taking over my mom's restaurant lately, since we're talking about jobs and stuff. If I did, I could help you with paying your mom's bills and you would be able to rest for a while and recharge. Give yourself time to get over the burnout. You need to give yourself some time off so you can get over this burnout. Honey, I'm not sure that's a great idea. Remember when you used to work there and ended up quitting because you hated it so much? I don't want you to put yourself through that again for me. <laughs> that's true. I had kind of forgotten, honestly. I do think I would like it now, though. I've grown up and gotten older, and I think it would be better to work in my own shop instead of working for some huge company. Besides, it wouldn't be like the old days when my mom was yelling at me and making me do all the bad jobs. I could be my own boss. She said she would give the shop to me for free, too, if I decided I want to take it over. I guess I'm just worried that something could happen. That's all. What if you resign from your job and then the restaurant burns down or suddenly there are no more customers? Money could become a real problem. She doesn't have a huge number of regular customers right now either. Remember though, I'll get severance pay when I leave our company. If I add that money and all my savings, I probably have about $30,000. That's not bad at all. I'll leave that all up to you, but there would be enough to help cover your mom's living expenses for sure. I trust you to manage our money so you can use my savings to pay our bills or whatever while you take some time out from work. Do you really think it would be okay? You trust me that much? Will it hurt his self-esteem to have me just give him the money like this? What if it makes him feel like a failure or something? I don't know if I'm comfortable with that, honey. It doesn't feel very fair. I know I'm your husband and we're a team, but I feel like I'm putting too much pressure on you to cover everything. If you're anxious about something going wrong and things not working out, we could always put an official agreement together. That way, if the worst came to the worst and we got divorced, you would agree to pay it all back to me. Huh? We're obviously not going to split up, babe, so it really doesn't matter. Would that make you feel more comfortable, at least? Oh, Jenny, thank you so much. I love you, and I'm so grateful to you for trusting me and having faith. I promise I will get another job after some time off and pay it all back to you. As long as we work hard, I'm sure we'll have no problems and things will work out. I trust you, babe. I know you, and I believe in you. Don't worry too much and stress yourself out. Just try to rest and recharge for now. We can overcome any problems that might come up later. I can't believe I was so lucky as to meet someone like you. You are the greatest honor and best luck of my life. Besides my mom, I've never had someone who cares about me and trusts me as much as you do before. It is such a good feeling to have someone believing in you and truly wanting the best for you. I feel the exact same, babe. That's why I want to do this for you. I love you. Always and forever. I love you too, sweetheart. Until the day I die. Hey, Mom. I'm all done with closing the restaurant up. Do you need me to do anything else? No, that should be everything, I think. I've finished all the washing up, so let's just call it a day and head home now. Thanks for your help. Man, today was crazy busy. I'm totally exhausted. You've been back here running the place with me for three years now, and you're still not used to it? How am I supposed to hand the shop over to you if you're exhausted after one shift? That doesn't exactly make me feel confident. Ugh, I'm still talking about this. Oh, come on, Mom. Can you really not let go of the place even now I've worked here so long? Can't you trust me? You can see that I'm doing a good job and I care about the restaurant doing well. I don't know what more you want from me. I won't give you the keys until I'm 100% confident that you can run it successfully on your own. That's why I haven't given it to you yet. Okay, Mom. I'll just wait then. Anyways, let's head home now. It's getting late. How's Freddy doing? Is he well? Still at home? Huh? Why are you suddenly asking about my husband? Has he said something to you? He hasn't come by the restaurant to see us in about two years. I just miss him. I want to know how he's doing, but I can't ask if I never see him. 
He keeps telling me he's too busy to visit, so I end up only seeing him at the holidays. It's natural to be curious about a family member when you don't get to see them often. He's always been busy. You know that. He just doesn't have any spare time. As much as he exaggerates, though, I think we end up getting off work at about the same time. The closing shift is always a late one. But he's doing well. He's healthy. Your mother-in-law, too? How's she doing? I don't know why you're suddenly so curious about them, Mom. It's so out of the blue. Of course, they're all well and healthy. Let's just get everything locked up and get out of here. Come on. You're right. I need to head home and get some rest. See you tomorrow to do it all over again. Wait, we're working again tomorrow? Of course we are. Our customers will be waiting. You know that. You need to be here every day to prove yourself to me before I hand over my business. You should be here every day until that happens. Oh, man, I'm gonna die. Seriously? Okay, fine. See you tomorrow, Mom. Sleep well. Hey, honey. I'm home. Are you around? Oh, yeah. Hi. Did you eat already? Should I make something? Sure. Babe, I made a bunch of little snacks and side dishes earlier. How come there's stuff for instant ramen on the side? You just boiled some noodles again? This really isn't healthy, honey. You've got to have some nutrition in there somewhere. I just didn't really fancy anything. I couldn't be bothered to cook, so I just did something quick. Did you ask that company about jobs today? I heard from a friend that a rule has opened up that you would be perfect for. You should definitely apply. God, please stop. As soon as you walk in the door, just nagging and nagging me. Can't you just leave it for one second? You're my wife, not my mother. I said just trust me. I know how to find a job. Honey, please. That's not what I meant. You know that. I was just thinking about you and worrying that you were feeling stuck or something. That's all. I didn't mean to nag you. Just leave me alone and trust me to find a new job on my own? I'm an adult man, for God's sake. I can do this by myself without you chasing me every day. You're even complaining about what I'm eating. Have you been speaking to my mom? Because you're starting to sound like her. Okay, I can see that I've upset you. I'm sorry, sweetie. I didn't mean anything by it. Fine, let's just leave it. Go and get washed up. I'm sure you feel gross and dirty from work. Man, you actually stink of grease and oil. Uh, what is that smell? Is that from work or did you swing by the gas station on your way home? It's from work. We've been selling a lot of fried chicken lately. There's really nothing I can do to avoid the smell. Sorry, babe. I'll chuck everything in the laundry right away. Seriously, that place doesn't bring in any money and your mom is showing no sign of giving the business to you. What's the point of working there anymore? We haven't even been married for five years and already it's like my wife is an old woman. You toil away in that place and come home smelly and greasy. I can't stand it. Why don't you just call it quits and find a better job? You could get something way nicer than that dump. I mean, it's hard to avoid the smell and stuff since I'm working in the kitchen. If I'm cooking oily foods, I'm going to get a bit oily too. I couldn't go in with a full face of makeup and my nails done either. I'd sweat the makeup right off and painted nails wouldn't last when I'm washing up all day. I remember I specifically told you when we got married that I don't like women that don't take care of their appearance. And lately, you look like an old woman. That's not very attractive. I get that, but if we want to pay our bills, we have to earn the money, somehow. I don't really have the freedom to be picky about my job right now. Plus, I literally just finished working. Things are tight as it is trying to pay for everything with my salary alone. You know I don't get paid much since it's only a small place. Oh, okay, so uh, this is all my fault? Because I quit my job so I could finally have some time off to get rested? Do you think I wanted to be stressing all day about money like this when I quit my job? No, uh, honey, please just listen to me. I know you're working hard to find a new, better job, and I don't resent you for quitting your old one. And I know that while I'm at work, you spend your days submitting applications and updating your CV and going to job interviews. You're doing your best, and I know that. Okay, good. I don't want you to think I'm just being lazy and lying around on the sofa all day. Actually, uh, since we're talking about it, 
I have another job interview coming up, and I think I'm gonna need to go out and buy some new clothes. Can you lend me some money? Can't you buy them with the money I've already given you for your expenses? It's a huge company. I can't go in the same old cheap suit I've been wearing for the others. First impressions are half the battle when it comes to finding a new job. Okay, sure thing. You're right, it's important to look your best when you're up for a new job. I'll send you a few hundred bucks so you can go out and buy yourself a nicer suit. I hope it helps you get the job. Me too. I'm feeling confident already. I really think this could be my last job interview. I feel like I'm gonna get it. One thing though, babe. Oh, what is it now? It's just that it's been three years now since you had a job. Have you ever thought of trying to find something part-time just to help with the bills and stuff? You'd still be able to look for an office job when you weren't working. Part-time job? Me? Are you crazy? No, I just think that... I feel like it would be good for you to have some kind of purpose. Even if it was just a few shifts a week, it would be good for your mental health. I didn't mean to stress you out, really. I promise, I didn't mean anything by it. I moved to the city, got a successful job in a big company, worked there tirelessly for years. How could you say that to me knowing how hard I worked? Do you want me to just go to the unemployment office and turn myself in, like some kind of loser or a piece of trash? Or would you rather I found some kind of serving job with all my experience as a company director? No, sweetie, please listen to me. You're misunderstanding what I said. I only mentioned it because you seemed stressed, and I wondered if finding some work might help with that. You end up spending so much time at home. I feel like a part-time job would help you get out and about and get some fresh air. You have no idea what the hiring process is like at my level. You got your job straight out of high school. It's a completely different ball game when you work at one of the big companies. They all have fixed periods for hiring, so there's no point even trying if it's the wrong time of year. And in the meantime, I have to spend all of my time preparing for any interviews. They could ask absolutely anything, so I have to be prepared for everything. Do you think it's as easy as turning up to the interview and just acting friendly? It's not that easy. Every day when I go to work in the morning, you're still asleep in bed. Then, when I get home from work late in the evening, it seems like you've just been playing games all day. I only ask because I don't know what you do while I'm out, and I thought you might have time to find a part-time job alongside the job search. <laughs> do you want to follow me around all day while I write cover letters and send my CV off to hundreds of companies? Would it make you feel better if you could actually see how hard I'm working? I'm not just lazing around while you're out of the house all day, you know? Does it seriously bother you that I play some games in the evening in my very limited free time after I've spent hours working anyway? No, babe, please listen to me. Just stop. I am so tired of this conversation, so just don't say anything else. You really do stink. Go and get in the shower and wash away that greasy smell before it fills the place. Okay, I understand. I'm sorry. Whatever, let's just leave it and call it a day. My mom called, by the way, and she invited us to go and visit her sometime this week. Make sure you schedule some time at the weekend to come with me. Sure thing, babe. Wow, today has been so amazing. I have had such a great day. Oh, really? I'm glad. Is that a new suit you're wearing, too? It suits you so well, you look really handsome in that color. I mean, this is kind of a normal outfit for me, if I'm honest. I should have expected that from the director of such a huge business. <laughs> you're just a cut above the rest. I guess that's what made you so successful. You're tall, handsome, and you present yourself well. Who wouldn't be impressed? I genuinely can't believe you haven't been snatched up. How does a guy like you not have a girlfriend? You must have women throwing themselves at you all the time. Hmm, since I've never really dated before, I guess I just don't know how it's done. Maybe that puts women off. I noticed it the first time that you and I met, actually. 
I feel like the reason I've never met someone I was interested in before now was all so that we could meet. It seems like it must just be fate, honestly. Aw, oh, you're such a charmer. Do you mind if I say something? Being with you makes me feel like I could do anything. If you ever wanted or needed something, I would do everything to make it happen. Oh, come on. Now you're just being too much. Oh, God, I am so embarrassed. I must be going all red. <laughs> I've never met such a cute girl like you before. Hey, should I buy the food today? Huh? No, don't be silly. It's on me. I only asked because there was something specific I've been wanting to try. What is it? I keep seeing this new Italian restaurant all over social media. It's meant to be so authentic and delicious. It's a bit embarrassing to go on my own, though, so I thought we could go today. I see. I know you mentioned you don't really like Italian food, but I think you should give it a try. It really looks so delicious. I'm sorry, I just don't fancy it. I really hate pasta. I always find the sauce smells so strong and splashes everywhere. Oh, really? No, I'm sorry. I, I shouldn't have suggested something if I knew you didn't like that. That was thoughtless. No, uh, don't worry about it. I know it's a weird thing to dislike. <laughs> I'm sorry we couldn't try it together. No, no, don't apologize. Then shall we go to that restaurant you mentioned you'd like before? Sure, and stop offering to pay. It is on me, you know that. I earn a lot more than you. The least I could do is take you out for a nice meal. To be honest, it hurts my pride a bit when people offer to pay for things. It makes me think I couldn't afford it. I'm sorry, I won't offer again. No need to keep talking about it. I wasn't trying to control you or anything. But you can expect me to want to provide for you and buy you nice things. Just remember that. Man, you're really just a dream. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> oh, come on, let's go and eat. Sounds good. Hmm, this sauce has a really strong flavor, but I think it'll go well with the meatballs since they're full of flavor too. I think if you let it simmer a bit longer, it will really bring out the flavor of the capers. You're learning. It's great to see you discovering more about cooking. I remember when you first started and you couldn't tell a Caesar salad from a Greek salad with feta. I feel like I can't just enjoy food when I'm eating anymore though. Every time you give me a bite of something new, it feels like you're testing me, Mom. I'm going to lose my passion, seriously. If you want to run your own restaurant, this is just what to expect. Everything becomes related to your business. Knowing what your competitors are doing is how you learn and develop your own new ideas for recipes. Then why did you make it seem like you wanted to give me the restaurant, if you think I'm still not ready? Why are you suddenly curious about that? I wanted you to start trying to become ready for it, that's why. But how am I supposed to become ready if you just tell me to serve the customers and never let me in the kitchen? Don't you see why that's frustrating? It just feels like you're trying to tease me and being mean. I didn't want to give the restaurant to you, that's why I've been so hard on you. I wanted you to hate working here and go find some company to work for where you could have a real career and be successful. What? Why have you changed your mind? You never told me this. I never knew what you wanted and I was worried you would think I was forcing you into taking over from me. And now you've been working here for three years and I can see that the sparkle in your eyes is brighter than when you started. It made you look so determined and passionate, like you felt you could do anything. So now I feel confident that I can leave the restaurant to you and you will fight to keep it going. Okay, well, now I'm not sure. It was really tough raising you on my own, but I can see you've got the same spark and drive as me. I know you'll do well. Oh, I see. But I also know there's something you haven't told me since you started working here with me. I know you want to support your family, and that's where your spark came from. I think I might have an idea of what's going on if you wanted to talk about it. Mom, listen to me. You don't have to tell me what's going on right now. You should wait until you feel ready. 
I don't know exactly what's going on, but I do know that sometimes figuring things out on your own is a part of life and an important experience. I trust you. I'm sorry, Mom. You have nothing to be sorry for. Don't you start apologizing. Come on, if you've finished your food, let's head back. Sure. Jenny, Freddy is at home right now, right? Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Why do you ask? That guy over the other side of the road, did you see him? He looks so much like Freddy. That is Freddy. What's he doing? Wait, what? Doesn't that girl with him have her arm through his? My God, he's lost his mind. What is he doing? Oh, I'm going to march right over there and slap the soul out of him. Mom, wait. We have to be smart. Come over this way where they can't see us. Are you crazy? How can you watch your husband on a date with another woman and not want to give him a piece of your mind? Not now, please. Just stay out of there. Wait for now, Mom. I'm begging you. Jenny! I'll explain everything, I promise. Just please. I, I just don't want to have to talk to either of them right now. You have to tell me absolutely everything that's going on, without trying to hide anything. Okay, fine. Just come over this way, please, Mom. I seriously can't believe this. What are you doing? Shh. I'm filming them. Be quiet. I just can't believe this. Oh, you're home? God, you scared me. What are you doing home early? I thought you wouldn't be back until later. I was tired. I spent all day helping Mom in the restaurant, so... There really aren't that many customers. I'm sure she could manage on her own. Did you realize it's been two years since you came by the restaurant? My mom always keeps an eye out for you, hoping you might come in. I mean, I don't really have any special reason to go. What? Every time I've been, the menu is the same. There's only so many times I can eat the same thing before it gets boring. Even so, she's your mother-in-law. She'd like to see you occasionally and hear your news. Ugh, fine. I'm not making any promises, though. Whatever. Just come by sometime. By the way, did you go downtown after your interview this morning? Wait, what? No. I don't think I've ever been downtown. It's really not a nice area. Huh. Weird. A friend told me they saw someone that looked exactly like you around there this afternoon. To be fair, they said he was with some other woman, so I guess it was just someone that looked similar to you. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I didn't go that way today. It wasn't me. Hey, babe, where did we leave those official papers? Huh? Oh, why are you looking for our documents? Nothing important. Just wanted to check where everything was and make sure it's filed properly. I think they're all in the second drawer of the dresser in the guest bedroom. Great, thanks. Uh, but, babe? Yeah? Do you have anything to say to me? Not really. Uh, why do you ask? Okay, fine. I'm going to bed. I'll see you later. Sleep well. Oh, there's no way her friend really saw me today, right? No, of course not. If someone had told her what I was doing, Jenny's reaction would have been way more intense. Still, I should be more careful from now on. I don't want to risk getting caught again. Oh, there you are, Freddy. I haven't seen you in so long. It's great to have you back. I'm really sorry, Mom. I've just been so busy lately. I don't have any free time to come and visit. Hi, Sarah. Come on in, Jenny. Are you both well? How are things? We're great, Mom. You don't need to worry about us. I'm an adult now, and I can take care of myself. Come through here and let's fix you a plate. I made all your favorites since you haven't been able to come and have them in so long. Mom, come on. I sent you money to cover your own expenses, not to prepare a feast for when we come over. 
Now, don't be silly. It's thanks to you that I have such a comfortable retirement and don't have to worry about money. Of course, I should do something special for you to say thanks. What's up with you lately, Jenny? Oh, nothing exciting. Same old stuff, really. You look like you've lost some weight since I last saw you. I hope you're eating enough. Must be difficult for you two to be working at the same company. I guess it must be easier seeing Freddy become so successful. Yes, absolutely. Okay, let's go eat and then we can have a sit down and a proper catch up. I need to hear all your news. Sarah, we brought some fruit and snacks for you. Please help yourself. I remember when you and Freddy first got married, and you couldn't even peel an orange. Look at you now. This looks beautiful. Where did you learn to do all of this? This is quite the display. What are you talking about? You can get good at anything with enough practice. Of course she's better now that she's done it more often. Freddy, darling, there's no need to shout. I was just asking a question. I didn't mean anything by it. You're right. Sorry, Mom. I didn't mean to yell. By the way, Jenny, I've been meaning to talk to you about something for a while. Sure thing. What's on your mind? As you know, I had a really tough time raising Freddy on my own. I had to make a lot of sacrifices for him and his success. I managed to put him through college and watched him get a great job. I was thinking about all this the other day. I feel like the two of you got married so suddenly. I was so involved in his life, but I had no idea. Yes, it was quite quick. I know you didn't go to college and only have your high school diploma. Don't you think it was such good luck that you met my son? I'm sure he's taught you a lot. To be honest with you, I expected him to marry up and find a successful driven woman to spend his life with. But I allowed your wedding since you seem like a kind, sweet sort of girl. Mom, this is so out of the blue. What's your point? I know it's annoying and embarrassing for me too, having to say all this. But I don't think it's fair for Jenny to have all the good luck in the world and get to marry you, but I don't get anything in return for giving her my son. What I mean to say is, she can't expect me to live on the money you send me for my bills alone, Freddy. She should help me out, too. Did you think I would be fine with just the money Freddy sends me? With nothing left over to do any shopping or meet any friends for a meal? Sarah, I really don't know where this is coming from. You've brought this up so suddenly. All the money I spend on my bills every month comes from Freddy alone. Don't you think you should pay your share? Where's the money from you and your salary? You work too, after all. I wish I had your luck and managed to marry a rich, successful man like Freddy. Surely you saw my house and realized it wasn't good enough? Don't you think I should get to live in a decent house too? I'm getting older now, and I have no idea how much longer I'll have to live in my sad little place by myself. Sarah, I'm really not sure what to say. This is so sudden, I haven't even had a chance to think about it or figure out what I want to say. Man, you really are totally oblivious, huh? Any good daughter-in-law would have spotted this problem immediately and done something about it. I guess I'll just have to sort this out for you then, since you can't make a decision. Get me a new, nicer place close to your house with Freddy. Surely you can manage on your own, that without having to beg my son for money. Excuse me? Sarah, you know I don't have that kind of money. I could never afford that. Well then, why don't you just resign from your job and give me the money you get when you leave? I'm sure you'll get quite a bit since you've been there so long and you're married to my son. Realistically, you weren't going to keep working there forever anyway, right? You're only a high school graduate, so you must be a contracted employee, right? So you can just leave whenever you want to and give me the money. Sarah, you can't just say that. Okay, Mom, let's just leave it there for now. I'll sort this out. Don't worry. Don't go giving me any more of your money. I want her to pay for a new place for me. Okay, okay, don't worry about it. Just wait a bit and leave everything to me. 
Babe, what are you talking about? What is there for you to sort out? Be quiet, Jenny. Uh, come on, let's go home and talk about it later. Honey, I can't believe you let your mom say all those things to me when you know what our situation is like right now. There is no way we can afford to get her a new place. Why did you promise to sort it out? I'm confused too. I've got a lot to figure out. My mom still thinks we're both working. She doesn't know I quit a while back. If neither of us work there and you quit too, like she said, she'll realize what's been going on. And your solution is to buy her a new house? You know we don't have that kind of money just lying around, right? There's no way we could afford it just to cover up your lie. Then you want her to keep living in her old place by herself? No, I'm not saying that. I know her place right now is small, but if you could find another in her building that has an extra room, it might be in her budget. That wouldn't be bad. My mom said it's important to her to live closer to me, though. Your solution wouldn't solve that problem. She's not asking for anything crazy. She just wants to be near her family and in a bigger place. Babe, she asked me to quit and buy her a house with my severance pay. Don't you think that's a little bit crazy? That's not just asking a normal favor. That's a huge thing to ask for. I don't think she's wrong, to be fair. Oh, babe, come on. Don't you think you're taking it a bit far? I think my mom will hate that I quit my job if she finds out now, when she's saying she needs a bigger place. Or when she finds out you're working at your mom's restaurant instead of a corporate job, she'll be so disappointed. Do you have any idea how quiet she went when I told her what your mom's job was when we got married? She was expecting someone from a much more successful family to match me and my upbringing. She only agreed to let us get married because you promised you didn't want to take over the family business and start running a greasy restaurant. I don't understand how this has anything to do with your mom wanting a bigger place closer to us. You have to figure out how to buy it for her. What did you just say? She needs to live somewhere nice, regardless of your situation. Hang on a second. I'm already paying all our bills and sending your mom money every month to pay her own bills and that ends up being my entire salary. Where do you think I'm going to get all this extra cash from? Surely you can ask your parents and they would lend you money? What? Surely you could get a loan too. There are plenty of ways you could find the money. Just figure it out. Have you lost your mind? You're acting totally crazy right now. What do you mean? I'm just being realistic. I saw a problem and I try to think of a few solutions. No, I mean, why is it my problem to find your mom a new house? She's your mother, not mine. Do you have another suggestion? I'm just saying this is for our family. She's your mother-in-law, which means she's your family now too. As soon as she finds out you're running your mom's restaurant, it is over for us. Do you understand that? And you think she would be totally fine with you having been unemployed for three years? Are you threatening me? Besides, do you think I'm not working just because I don't want to? You know how hard I've been trying to find a new job. I know how much money you've been spending just sitting at home and playing games all day and I have not said a word about it. Are you really going to start a fight over such a small amount of money? It's really not that serious. A small amount of money? Do you have any idea how much money I've sent you over the last three years so you wouldn't have to go back to your old job? You gave me that money and said to not worry and that I should just rest. I'm resting and trying to find a new job. What am I supposed to do about not getting one yet? I have never once complained about you being unemployed for the last three years because I knew how much you wanted to leave your old job. To be honest, if money was really that tight and you needed cash urgently, you should have gone out and got yourself a part-time job to make ends meet. <laughs> a part-time job? Do you think we're on the same level? You think you're on the same level as someone who was a director at a big company with your high school diploma and a job at your mom's cafe? Is that really what you think of the job I'm doing? While I'm earning money to pay our bills? Yes, I only have a high school diploma, but you know what? I am not ashamed of my education and I'm not ashamed of my job either. There's no reason for me to be embarrassed. Fine, but I'm a bit embarrassed by it. 
I'm sick and tired of you coming home every day smelling of grease and looking all grubby and nasty. Did you know the reason I wear a suit every time I go out is to make it clear that I'm not at rock bottom like you? You think I look like I'm at rock bottom? That must make you feel ashamed to be begging for money from someone at rock bottom so you can spend it on takeout and video games. What? Begging for money? <laughs> Are you crazy? How dare you speak to me like that? From now on, you're not getting a single cent from me. You can sort out your own finances. You're just gonna cut me off so suddenly? Do you want me to get on my knees and beg you for forgiveness? It's none of my business whether you beg me for money or not. Like I said, you can earn your own money from now on since I'm clearly so beneath you. Stop talking nonsense and find my mom a new house, or I'll just keep bugging you until it's sorted. It's you who's crazy, you know? Just be quiet and watch your back. I'm not going to tell you twice. Sort everything out by yourself. I'm not going to help you. And until things are resolved and my mom has a new house, I don't want to see you. Please, let's not leave things like this. I have nothing else to say to you right now, so just get that sorted and let me know when it's done. Let's sleep in separate rooms until then. I don't want to have to see you every night. Surely now she'll be scared enough to apologize, just to get things to go back to normal. She'll come running back saying it was all her fault, please won't I forgive her. I'll just wait until then, I'm sure it won't be long. Hey mom, could we talk for a second? Of course, sweetie. I can tell there's been something on your mind for the last few days. Shall we grab a drink and talk about whatever it is once we finish closing up the restaurant? Sounds good. You did a great job with the cooking today, by the way. There's a bit left of the soup. You should try some so you can remember the flavor and try to recreate it every time because this is perfect. You're such a mom, telling me to eat more and worrying about what's on my mind. Did you know this is the first time you've told me I did a good job with the cooking? Hush, just eat up. Oh wow, this really does taste just like when you make it. I told you so. See, if you can keep the flavor consistent, just do exactly what you did today each time. Do you want some more? Yes, please. But mom, do you think you know what I want to talk to you about? Is that why you waited for me to bring it up? I figured it would be about your husband and your mother-in-law. I assumed you would mention it whenever you felt ready to talk about it. Man, I really couldn't lie to you if I tried, huh? Honey, I know about him cheating on you. There's nothing you could say to me at this point that would shock me. Just tell me what's going on. To be honest, Freddy quit his office job when you said you were going to give me the restaurant. We've been lying about him still working there, telling everyone he's doing really well. He's been unemployed for about three years now. Does your mother-in-law know about it? Nope. She thinks he's been working at the same company this whole time, just like everyone else. Is that why you told me you wanted to work here and earn some money? I'm really going to go crazy, so you're telling me he hasn't worked at all for the last three years? Yep, and I've been sending money to his parents to pay their bills. So for the last three years, you've been working away here, getting so sweaty and greasy to earn money for him and his parents. And then a few days ago, we caught him cheating on you while you're paying his bills? No, I knew about him cheating already. A friend had contacted me and said she saw him with another woman. Freddy doesn't know that I know. I don't let him go through my messages, so he has no idea she got in touch. So that's why you didn't want to call him out when we caught them. That's why you just filmed a video? I'm not a little girl anymore, Mom. I've grown up and learned about the world and how unfair it can be. No, I can see that. You're a grown woman now. There's actually one other thing. There's something else? What has he done now that's worse than all this? Well, I don't know how much more I can take of this. Knowing how my daughter is being treated, it's just too much. Like I said, my mother-in-law thinks both of us are still working in the office, right? And as far as she knows, the money she's getting for her bills and shopping is coming from Freddy's salary. She thinks he's paying for everything. We went to visit her recently, and she said I should buy her a new house to show I can keep up with my elite husband. She kept talking about how he's so above me and I'm way below his level. Are they both crazy? 
That's a completely insane thing to ask for, even if she does think you're still working at your old company. I knew a marriage wouldn't be sunshine and rainbows all the time, I guess. I just hope that once we get over this bump, things might get better again. If Freddy can find another job, surely things will improve, right? And then we'll be back on track and we can smooth things over. Even if I was as hopeful as you, I don't think I would be able to put up with everything you have. I'm a glass half-empty kind of woman. A realist. <laughs> Mom, I'm proud of the work I do. I love my job here. And I'm proud of you, too, for having built this restaurant from the ground up. But he doesn't see it that way. He doesn't recognize the value in our work and doesn't want us to live together anymore. He just sees me as a dirty, smelly loser. This is why I didn't want you to inherit the restaurant. I remember taking the elevator and people were covering their noses so they wouldn't smell the grease on me. I never wanted you to have the same kind of life as me. Always feeling judged. Oh, Mom, I'm sorry. Please don't cry. I didn't mean to upset you. I don't feel sad about any of this. Honestly, I made my decision. You never forced me to come work with you again. And I'm not saying this because I think Freddie and I are going to get a divorce either. I just wanted to tell you what's been on my mind. I know you noticed. I'm so sorry, Jenny. Everything I've done has just made your life more difficult. Mom, stop talking like that. Just let me finish my point. <laughs> this must be the first time you're raising your voice at me, don't you think? You've always been so quiet and meek, it made me worry people would take advantage of you. Don't you think I'm being disrespectful? Should I be watching my tone? No, don't be silly. I know it's not because of something good, but you look so alive. You're getting older and changing. Okay, then. Is there anything I can do to help you? No, not really. I feel better just having spoken to you about it, honestly. I can sort this out by myself. Don't you go worrying about the restaurant, then. It's sad, but you have to be so strong to survive in this tough world. Yeah, I think I've learned that recently. I trust you to figure things out, sweetie. You're wise enough to handle this on your own now. Thank you for listening and trusting me, Mom. Of course, honey, I'll always be here. Um, excuse me, are you Jenny? Yes, that's right. I heard you were trying to get in touch with me because you had something to say. Please, have a seat. Oh, uh, thank you. I was trying to contact you in hopes that your life wouldn't end up a total screw-up like mine. I'm sorry, I am not sure what you mean. I'm Freddy's wife. We've been married for several years. That's why I'm bringing this up. What on earth are you talking about? Are you crazy? I know it will be difficult to believe this, and trust me, I understand it seems like a crazy thing to say. I brought a few of our wedding photos and proof of a relationship to help show you. No, this can't be true. Is this all real? You haven't faked these pictures? Yes, they're real. They're from our wedding five years ago. God, this is making my head hurt. I can't believe it. I think it would be best if you stopped wasting your time with a married man and ended things with him. <laughs> Never ever dated someone who was in a relationship before. This feels like something from a movie. Wait, why do you want me to break up with Freddy? If I was in your position, I would want a divorce. I, I could never trust him again. If I was a married man, I would never even think of meeting another woman. I can't believe he would do that. You haven't seen him in about a week, right? How do you know that? Because I haven't given him any money for the last week. I don't suppose you know the name of the company he works at. Has he told you? He's actually been unemployed for the last three years. The money he's spending on your dates is money I gave him. I've been paying for everything since he quit his job. Do you honestly think I would believe that? That I would just trust your words? I only just met you. Why should I take your word for it? You could be making all this up. What if I call him out and it turns out you were lying? Here, let me show you some messages. Hopefully this convinces you that I'm telling you the truth. Do you see all these messages from him asking me for money? Ah, here's some from when he was job hunting. He says he's been trying to find another job for the last three years. My God, 
I just don't believe this. What have I done? I mean, there was no way you could have guessed this. He's been lying to you this whole time. Why are you sympathizing with me now? You should just call him out and get a divorce. Leave him in the dirt. I can't believe he's a cheater. And I'm just his side piece? I never thought this would happen to me. Anyway, he's clearly having an affair. I trust what you're seeing now. I'm not here to scare you or make you feel bad. I just have a favor to ask. Why do you need a favor from me? Just kick him out and be free. It's nothing huge. If you could send him a message asking to break up in a couple of weeks, say Sunday at 8 p.m., that would be great. Why should I do that? Surely he should hear about this from you. Because on that day, I'm going to break off our marriage, so he'll be busy with me until the evening and wouldn't be able to check his messages. <laughs> I thought you seemed pretty meek and quiet, but you're a formidable woman. Well, I don't want to date a man who's got no job and no money, so I guess I'll do it. Thank you. Make sure you send it at the right time so he realizes what he's done. So you're just going to leave him? You're not going to yell at him about what he's done? I'm going to pretend I didn't know he cheated. To be honest, I came here to try and save you from him. If we both break up with him on the same day, he'll really lose his mind. That's why I'm asking for your help. Okay, that sounds good. I don't want some huge, messy breakup, so I'm just going to say it's over. Sure thing. I'll take care of everything else. All you have to do is send the text. And don't tell him why you're ending things. I don't want him to know we've figured him out. Okay, and... Um... I... I want to say I'm sorry. There's no need for you to apologize. I just hope that in the future you meet someone who can give you their all and matches your commitment. Someone who doesn't need rescuing. I'll be sure to contact him in two weeks, at 8 p.m. Thank you. I doubt we'll have any reason to see each other again, which is probably for the best. Agreed. Let's assume this is the first and last time we meet. It's been longer than I expected since I last saw you. I didn't think it would take you this long to make a decision. How have you worked things out? What's the plan? Mom, it's going to take a bit of time. Please be patient and give us a minute to get everything sorted. I don't see why it's taking so long. You have the severance pay from your jobs now. Why can't you just use that? Sarah, I quit my job at that company three years ago. I haven't worked there since. I've been helping my mom in her restaurant, and now she's let me take over as the business owner. What? You can't be serious. Before you got married to Freddie, you said you never wanted to take over the family business. Do you think someone working a gross, smelly job like that should be with my son? Think of how it looks. I've been working really hard for the last three years, Sarah. There is no shame in that. Since I took over from my mom, business has been booming. We have people waiting in line outside almost every day before we open. We're literally raking in the money. It's been amazing. Hmm. Well, okay, I guess you have to earn money somehow, even if it is working in a restaurant. Well, now that you're so successful, you'll be able to spend more money on me and make me rich, too. No, I won't. There won't be any need for me to help you in the future. What are you saying? Sarah, your super successful son has been unemployed for the last three years. I never told you. I've been paying his bills the whole time, working myself to the bone with my mother. All the money he told you he had been sending was from my salary, too. He hasn't paid for a single thing. Hey, stop that. Oh, my goodness. You can't be serious. Freddy, is she telling the truth? He's also been cheating on me, which is another thing I wanted to mention. Do you want to see the proof? I have a video of them together. Oh, my, who is this woman? I can't believe this. What is going on? Freddy, I want to hear it from you. Look me in the eye and tell me she's been lying about all this. Mom, please just calm down first. I can explain everything. I haven't finished speaking yet, actually. Oh, will you shut up? How can there possibly be more? Fine, just tell me what else there is. 
Your son and I also filed some official documents three years ago. You know what notarization is, right? It means every word in the document is legally recognized. Do you want me to show you what it says? Something we signed three years ago surely can't be relevant now. Why even bring this up? Are you saying I wrote everything in the document? I can't even remember what it's about. This is crazy. Well, at first it was just a record of me giving you $30,000. I was worried about hurting your pride by just giving you the money outright. That's why I had it recorded. I thought you would feel more comfortable. I also didn't know at the time, but it turns out that the document says more than just Jenny gave Freddy some money. Hmm. With an interest rate of 20% per annum on $30,000, that must mean there's more than that to be repaid. That's only if we calculate it with that interest, though. Actually, the document says the money has to be paid back immediately if we were to get a divorce. So as long as we stay married, it's no problem. How can you say all of this in front of my mother? The money you owe me is more like 75000 now. Are you worried about paying that back? You really are such a cruel, mean person. I can't believe I married you. For three years, I've worked hard every day to bring home the money we need while you sat at home, and now you speak to me like that? Plus, if we add up how much I've earned over these three years, I'm sure it's more than you owe me according to that document. Would you rather pay me that? You never once mentioned this, this whole time. You always said take time to have a break and rest. I can see why you didn't bother trying to find a new job. Why would you, when you're basically getting paid to do nothing by me? Honestly, the restaurant is doing really well lately. Since I've inherited it from my mom, we've attracted a lot of new younger customers and gone viral on social media. There's a line outside the store every day. Sweetie, don't think of this as just a financial problem. Think of the years we've spent together, the memories we've made. Surely those are more valuable. The business is successful. What more do you want? I am tired of putting up with the way I've been treated. For three years, I've been told I smell bad, look bad, that my job is worthless, and I should be ashamed. I know how much it would hurt my mom if she heard these things and knew I'm treated so badly. I felt like I would be letting her down if I got a divorce. But now, I'm successful enough on my own, thanks to the restaurant you've always been so judgmental of. We have money to spare. Then why on earth did you bring this document with you if you don't want money? Can't you just get a divorce and move on? I never thought you and Freddy were a good fit, even from the start. Just get rid of this stupid document, get a divorce, and get on with your life. Do you want to know what Freddy said to me? He told me I should borrow money from my mom to buy you a new house. He wanted me to list the restaurant as collateral. Are you out of your mind? If you don't stay quiet. We are both contributors on the house we moved into after the wedding, so you can just sign it over to me and pay off what you owe. Don't contact me about anything other than that from now on. <laughs> Do you think these documents are still valid? There's no way you'll win this. <laughs> That's just a copy for a start. The real document is with my lawyer. I'll sue you. You can't threaten me with legal action like this. I wonder if you'll still be talking like this in a month. Go oh, shut up. Just get out of this house. No need to yell. I'm about to leave anyway. God, I can't believe I married that woman. I kept asking you why you were marrying into a restaurant oven and family. I tried to stop you. If I had known what would happen, of course I wouldn't have married her. I'll get my stuff out of the house tomorrow. After that, I'll see you in court. Are you sure this is the right restaurant, Freddy? Yes, I remember it being here, but why are there so many people here? It never used to be this busy. Never mind that now. Let's just get inside and find Jenny. You're right. She should be somewhere inside. Excuse me, uh, what are you doing? I'm sorry? Do you not see the queue? Uh, get to the back of the line. Uh, we're not here to eat. Uh, we're here to speak to the owner on some personal business. 
Even so, you should wait your turn. How would we know you're telling the truth? Just join the queue. Don't you see how many other people want to get in too? No, it's like he said, we're not here to eat. There are a lot of people wanting to try this place after seeing it on the television. Just join the queue, there's no reason you should get to skip the line. Goodness, what is going on? We can't even get in to talk to her. Uh, apologies, everyone. Mom, let's just join the queue and wait our turn. I already expected it to be difficult to get a table here knowing how popular it was. I didn't realize it was attracting a bunch of weirdos, too. Uh, what did you just say? Man, no need to get aggressive. Is this your first time waiting in line? Not very patient, are you? How many times do I have to tell you we're not here to eat the food? Sir, if you keep causing a scene, I will call the cops. Now calm down. Just be quiet and wait your turn. Man... Next customer, please. Oh, my. Louise, it's me, Freddy. I came because there was something I wanted to say to you. You know, I haven't come by the restaurant in a while, and then when I do, you're here. I can't believe my luck. Please listen, Louise. It's difficult for my son to be here talking to you today, but divorce is even harder. Let's have an open and honest conversation about adults. How about that? It's not too late, you know. I already know everything you did. Why on earth would I listen to whatever you've got to say? Louise, please, could you call Jenny? I can talk to her instead. Don't call me Louise. It's Mrs. Smith to you. Jenny told me all the awful things you did, and I know how you treated her. Why do you think I would listen to someone like you who treated my precious daughter so badly? And now you come to my restaurant and try to boss me around? I don't think so. Louise, come on now. There are times in life when each partner takes a turn being the breadwinner. Sometimes it's the husband, sometimes it's the wife. Freddy got his life sorted out now. He's working again and he wants another chance. Let's just live happily ever after, hmm? Don't think you're sneaky. I know he doesn't have to pay Jenny back if they stay married. He's told me about how much he owes her, with interest rates being what they are. Are you scared of the consequences of your own actions? Well, look what the cat dragged in. Some high-flying man in the big city now, huh? Jenny, go back to the kitchen. I'll deal with them, don't worry. No, it's okay. I still have things I want to say to him anyway. Do you see how much success I've made from the business you laughed at? I don't even need the money you owe me. I've made enough of my own. Why don't you just get a divorce then? You know we're not wealthy. Surely you don't expect to be paid back anyway? I don't know, to be honest. I guess since we went to the effort of getting that document notarized, I feel like I should follow through with legal action. If you do want to argue your case, do it in court next time. It's not good for my customers to see you embarrassing yourselves like this. Although, I doubt anyone is actually listening to you. Why do you insist on punishing us like this? Do you really not understand why I would want some revenge? For years, you were rude and scathing about my mother's business and my work. You repeatedly told me I smelled bad and looked dirty when I came home from a hard day's work earning money to pay your bills. And now it's paying off and I'm the successful one. You can just stand seeing me succeed, could you? Are you really going to keep going like this? Let's just settle and get a divorce. Oh, please. We're eating. Can't you be quiet? I've been listening to what's been said, and hearing how you talked about this wonderful restaurant makes me feel so bad, too. If you're gonna be so judgmental, don't come dragging on someone's tail when they start to do well. I agree. The manager has been polite and patient with you. Just leave. Ma'am, do you need me to call the police if they keep refusing to leave? No need, but thank you. I think they've realized now that they'll get no sympathy from me. Just get out, both of you. There's no reason to see each other anywhere besides the courtroom from now on. 
Excuse me, everyone. I'm aware this has been an uncomfortable and awkward atmosphere, and I would just like to wholeheartedly apologize. No, uh, please, don't worry. It's clear that you haven't done anything wrong. We're very happy sitting here and eating this delicious food. I know I started to shout a bit, since I was upset too. I'm sorry. Let's get out of here, Freddy. She clearly won't listen to us. Why do I have to pay back the money, though? That is so unfair. Well, I don't know what you want me to do about it. I raised you well when you were a child. Your problems are your own now. Sort it out yourself. Hey, Mom! God, is there not even one person out there who will help me? How can you all be so heartless? Next customer, please. Ah, uh, actually, Freddy, I do have some words of advice that might help in the situation. After this, never try to talk to me ever again. I'm done with you. Sure, Jenny, just please tell me what to do. Go out and get a job. Just go and earn your own money. Okay, that's all I wanted to say to you. Hope to never see you again. When I first got married, I thought life would always be sunshine and rainbows. But then my husband quit his job, became unemployed, got addicted to gaming, and even had an affair. Even then, I was hesitant to file for a divorce, but my mother-in-law's words convinced me. It was when she told me to buy her a house and not use any of my husband's money. I remember signing the notarized document when we married and thought nothing of it. But it's thanks to that piece of paper that I was able to get back all the money I had spent on my ex-husband over the years. My business was so successful, I didn't even need the money by then. But I remember how my mother-in-law and ex-husband had treated me with disrespect and contempt, and I think it's still money I earned. My mom and I are closer than ever, too. She finally signed over the restaurant to me and was able to retire and live a peaceful life of rest. She still visits the restaurant often, though, to see how things are going. I am so proud of myself for getting a divorce, freeing myself from a toxic marriage, and building a successful business. Hey, another ten of my relatives are coming over today, okay? Wait, they're all gonna come over again? But I just gave birth two weeks ago. Okay, and why should that matter to me at all? You're my wife, so you better not embarrass me in front of my relatives, got it? But it is only the third day since I left the hospital. It just seems a bit early to be having so many people over. Can't you tell them to come over a bit later? Anyways, it's gonna be a big dinner again tonight, so don't screw this up. Go out to the store and get me some snacks for us too, okay? Make sure everything is ready before people are over. Look, I am trying to tell you that I can't do something like that. I just haven't physically recovered enough. You can't just tell me to cook a meal for 10 people all of a sudden. What are you talking about? You're my wife, that's your job. Please. The baby was up all night crying and I barely got any sleep. I just can't do something like this right now. He was crying? I didn't hear anything at all last night. Well, good for you. I have to say that I'm jealous that you were able to sleep all the way through all of that crying. Anyways, just quit making excuses about not sleeping or being too tired and get cooking. You can't make me do this. I seriously just physically can't right now. And I certainly don't feel like taking your newborn to the store to handle all of this shopping too. What are you talking about? Just hold the little guy while you're walking around. I barely have the strength to do anything. How do you expect me to carry around that baby and do all the shopping? You know, if you keep babying the kid and never take him outside, then he's going to grow up weak, just like you. You mean if I keep babying this newborn baby? Besides, you all smoke, and I can't have that around the baby. Don't you know how bad that is for his lungs? Hey, look, when I was little, my parents and every other adult I know smoked around kids, and we all grew up fine, didn't we? Are you really going to pretend like there isn't decades of science to prove that it wasn't okay? I was able to go out for the night to my sister's place last night, but I can't just keep doing that. That's right. You can't keep doing that. 
if you're not home when everyone gets here, then they're all gonna go on and on about what a bad wife you are. But I can't stay up late with all of them. You all go on well into the morning. It isn't good for our baby either. Well, then at least let us smoke if you're saying we can't stay up now. Besides, everyone who was coming wants to see my son. You barely bought him out at all two days ago when they all came over. That's because I was trying to protect our baby from them. Listen to me. If you want things to go smoothly with my family, then you're going to have to start performing much better as my wife. Besides, he's my son too, so I have a final say. I understand that it's important for your relatives to see and interact with the baby. I'm just saying that doing it all so late at night right after we got out of the hospital is just the worst timing. So now you're saying that none of my family has any manners and are all rude? They smoke up the house, leave the bathroom a filthy mess, pass out in our living room, vomit on the floor, and do nothing to even to attempt to clean up after themselves. I've already told you that as my wife, it is your job to take care of all of that. Why won't you understand that? Please, do you really not think that you're being ridiculous right now? I need time to let my body recover from all of this. I don't get what the big deal is. You keep the house clean anyways, it's just part of that. Well, it would be nice if you could at least help out cleaning up after them every now and then. All I want is a month to let my body rest and recover. I can't believe this. Who knew that I would marry such a weak woman? What did you just say to me? Well, that's what my mom said. She told me that back in the day, women were tougher and didn't whine and whinge about being too tired to work after giving birth. Okay, well, that was then and this is now. And I don't think it's fair to push all these old ideas on me. So now you're calling my mom stupid? Oh, I really can't believe you. Of course I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that we don't share the same exact ideals. If you don't get the food and booze together for my family by this weekend, then I'm going to throw you and that little brat out of the house. Do you understand me? How can you say something so cruel? What's the matter with you? You better learn some respect and how to please my parents. This is how it's going to be for a very long time. This can't be happening. Is this really my life? What the heck is all this about you being taken to the hospital? I gave the baby to my sister to take care of while I went to do the shopping. Then I passed out from anemia. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, how can you be so weak? My grandma is stronger than you. Please, John, I'm trying my best for you. Well, tell that to my family while they're sitting around our house hungry and thirsty because you're being a lazy bum. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. Well, what are we supposed to do now? Everyone is coming over. Is that really the only thing that you're worried about right now? What are you talking about? Of course. I mean, don't you care about where the baby is or how I'm doing? The fact that I'm in the hospital at all? You don't care at all, do you? Well, I'm texting you, aren't I? Would I be doing this if I cared? And you already told me he's with your sister. I can't take this anymore. This is too much. No, you've slacked off enough. It's not time for that. Just go get a blood transfusion and get back here. John, I want to know, what am I to you? What are you to me? You're the weak woman who should be in the kitchen cooking for me right now. I see. That's all I am to you then. That's right. So now that you know what you are, get back here and start cooking. You're right. I'm almost through with this IV drip, and then I'll go straight home. Are you going to make it in time to cook for everyone? Yes, John, I will be. I'm feeling better now that I've gone to the hospital. I promise I'll be home soon and start cooking. My sister told me she would help me out tonight. Good. That's more like it. That's what I like to hear. And I promise to bring out our baby so that all your relatives can see him. Really? You really mean that? Of course. After all, everyone is coming over because they want to see the baby, right? 
That's right, I'm glad that you're finally starting to get some senses into your head. At this rate, you'll be a wife that I can be proud of around my family. I only hope that I can make sure that this weekend is fun for you and your family. Nice, yes, we'll be drinking until the morning. I'll make sure to order some alcohol online and get it all ready for you to party all night. Okay, now this is the kind of wife that I've always wanted. I'll make sure that everything is ready for you tonight. I promise. My sister picked me up from the hospital and took me home. I thought, this is what family should really be. The only thing I wanted was for my marriage to be over. As I thought about how sick and tired of my life I was, I was suddenly overcome with a strange energy. I got up and began shopping for dinner as my sister set the table. I was breastfeeding my baby while working hard in the kitchen. By the end of it all, I prepared 10 wonderful plates ready to be eaten by John and his family. Then I left Bobo and signed divorce papers on top of her bed and walked out of the house. Finally, you've finally done well for yourself. This is just the best, and this is some of the best food that I've ever eaten in my life. That makes me very, very happy to hear that, John. Everyone here is so impressed that they've even been taking pictures of all the dishes. Well, I worked very hard. Hearing that makes it all worth it, though. You really did great tonight. So, where are you now? I'm at my sister's house right now. Wait, what? But everyone is here. I thought that you were going to be here with my son. Why are you there? It's okay. Your son is still at home. I left him there for you. You've got to be getting me. I can't take care of him by myself. I've never even made formula before. It'll be okay. Your mother is there, right? I'm sure that she can help you out with that. Well, where is he? In the bedroom? That's right. I left your son on top of our bed. Wait, what is this? What is the meaning of this? What's the matter now? Is something wrong? This is just a big doll. What is this? It's Bobo. Make sure you take care of him well, okay? What the heck is this? Where's Marty? What are you trying to pull here? And what the heck are these divorce papers? They are papers that you sign in order to initiate a divorce. Could you not put that together yourself? Is this supposed to be some kind of joke or something? Bring back my son right now. It's fine. Just calm down, John. You have Bobo now. But he can't be around smoke, so make sure not to let him inhale too much secondhand, okay? Everyone here was looking forward to seeing my son. How could you do this to me tonight? I put lots of beer and wine in the fridge. Please enjoy it along with all the food that I made you. I hope you have a fun night. Well, we will. We'll eat it all. What do you think about that? How does the food taste? I worked really hard on it. It's good. It's really, really good, in fact. But there is something a little off with the flavor. Oh, really? Well, my sister was in charge of all the seasoning. I wonder what she put in. I see. Wow. I didn't realize that your sister was such a good cook. By the way, is your mom and everyone enjoying the food as well? Yes, they're eating and they all agree it's good. They're absolutely furious with you, though. My mom keeps talking about wanting to see her grandson, though. Oh, well, I'm just so, so sorry to hear that. Is that all you have to say for yourself? You ought to bring Marty back here right now. Then you can leave again. Ah, uh, okay. I'll be sure to do that then. I am serious. She is really pissed at you. I'm not messing around right now. You need to get back here and apologize right now. Mm, don't worry. I'll get on that right now. <laughs> but wow, you really did make a bunch of food. This is awesome. Of course. It is like you said. I'm your wife and it's my job to cook for you, right? Good, yes. Finally, you see the light. So everyone is enjoying all the food that I put together then? They really are. We've already eaten through about half of it. That is so wonderful to hear. I wonder if 
you wouldn't mind giving everyone there a message from me. What do you want me to tell everyone? I want you to tell everyone that all the ingredients of tonight's dinner are actually imported. Nothing is from America. Wait, what did you just say? That's right. Our appliances are American and so are our cars. I remember you saying for some reason that your family is obsessed with eating only domestic products, right? You told me that they physically couldn't even stomach eating imported products. I've just made everyone stop eating right now. Everyone looks like they're about to be sick. How could you do this to all of us? Don't tell me that they're changing their mind about the food now. You told me that they all thought it was so, so good. No, our bodies will physically reject food that isn't from the U.S. Oh, this can't be happening. Oh, yeah. You told me that you won't even eat out a restaurant since you can't be sure of where all the food is sourced from. Because it's true, that is why home cooking is such a strong tradition in our family. And you just really don't think that that might cause trouble for the one person that you keep asking to cook for you? Especially if that person is your wife, who's just given birth. Don't you think that's a little cruel, John? What is this supposed to be? You're trying to get back at me or something like that? You mean like revenge? No, nothing like that. It's just that buying enough food to feed 10 people can be quite expensive, and it was cheaper to get imported foods. Oh no, what have you done? My mom just threw up. Oh no, did she really puke? And my uncle is breaking out into hives. What did you put in this food? Me? Well, I didn't put anything in it. Oh no, even my brothers are puking now. My dad looks like he's about to pass out. Wow, it sounds like a scene straight out of hell or something like that. We have to call an ambulance. This is really, really bad. Oh, don't do that. The emergency services are meant to be used for actual emergencies, you know? Are you trying to kill us all? Are you trying to pull a Jonestown or something? You must have put something in the food. We're gonna call the cops on you. You won't get away with this. We have all the evidence we need with this food. They'll run a test on it and you'll go to prison for this. Oh, please. That would also just be a waste of resources. The detectives need to be out there solving real crimes. This is a crime. You'll go straight to prison for the rest of your life. And how could you take away my son from me, too? I only cooked you all dinner. I doubt I'll be arrested for that. If it were a crime, then all housewives would be arrested. Go back and clean up all of this right now. The house is covered with vomit. Actually, I am never going back there again. What are you talking about? All of your stuff is... Wait, where is everything? Well, I left some stuff there. Feel free to toss it all out if you want. This isn't a joke. I'm serious right now. Do you even realize what you've done? Get back here and clean up after us. How about you do it yourself, John? But you're the wife. It's your job to clean up after us. It looks to me like it's your job now, actually. Just who the heck do you think you are, huh? I think that I'm a woman who just gave birth and am being forced to take care of my husband and his entire family. So now I'm the bad guy? What did I even do? You didn't do anything, John. So then why am I in the wrong here? That's just it. You're in the wrong because you didn't do anything. You never even lifted a finger to help me. But I'm the man. It's not my job to do any of that stuff. I couldn't even do it if I tried. The only two things that you can't do are give birth and breastfeed. Otherwise, you are more than capable. But I don't even know how to cook. I was never taught how. That's so crazy for a family that takes such pride in home cooking. But it sure is a good thing that it's never too late to learn. Or you could go and try finding a wife who actually wants to do all of that for you. But I have to take care of my child. But I'm the man I shouldn't have to. You never even cared how rough giving birth was on my body. You just drank and expected me to cook for your parties night after night. You never once showed any care for me. Well, you should have told me that you would have liked a little help then. I did. I did tell you that I need help. 
but you just insisted that I do it all because I'm the wife. Well, what is the point of getting married if your wife isn't going to look after you? Not only that, but you kept inviting people over all the time. I'm sick of having to put up with your disgusting, rowdy family. Okay, fine, I get it. I'll only invite my family over once a month. How's that? Are you even reading what I'm sending you? That isn't the issue. Uh, the ambulances have arrived, three of them. Even the cops have arrived. It is all over for you now. They are probably going to fine you for wasting their time. As if we're going to sue you into oblivion for what you've done to us. And I'll never sign these stupid divorce papers. Hmm, whatever you say, John. Just go to the hospital and feel better soon. Well, you can probably guess how this little drama ended. The police analyzed the food and found that it was just food. The entire family were fined for wasting city resources over their own paranoia. The police, doctors, and analysts all agreed that they were just making a big scene over eating a bit of imported food. In addition to their fines, they were asked to think seriously about their actions and to only call emergency services in case of an actual emergency. Without me to cook for everyone, John's family quickly grew sick of hosting parties all the time. They all told John to go and find a new wife. I hired a reliable lawyer who saw that our divorce went through without a hitch. John was made to pay child support as well as a hefty sum in alimony. Little Marty is growing up nicely and is already seven months old. I've begun looking for a daycare and am the happiest I've been in a long, long time. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.